Hey guys, welcome back to the Obi Thorin Alliance. What are we doing today, Jacob? Really pumped to be talking about The Last of Us on HBO Max and Binge in Australia. So stick around and see us recap the first episode. So, The Last of Us, the first episodes came out at least on HBO Max in America on Binge and viewable on Foxtel here in Australia. Mm. Uh, I played the games, you haven't. Uh, so we're going to get two different perspectives of what we thought about it. First, I'm intrigued. What were your first impressions? It was. It had a slow start, but it build and it build, and then it had its epic scene when planes were crashing. The military were, I guess, had military solutions, and then people were running, crashing, and really epic scene, and then we had a flashback, but... That scene sets up the tone for the show, so sometimes you need a slow burn to set up the show. Perfect. Mm. For someone's played the game, it followed pretty much in exact order of what happened throughout the game. Some slight variations and a few extras, mm. but overall followed it pretty closely. So I knew what was coming, but I was still intrigued to see what would happen and how they would portray it in the show, which is great because it's hard to... Not often do you enjoy something when you know what's coming, so it was nice to still have that experience even though I knew what was about to come. So, was it better playing it as a gamer or watching it, watching actors do it? I must say, I think if I wasn't, if I hadn't played the game prior, I may not have watched the show. Mm. So I think the game needed to come first because the the show in itself, I don't know if it would have taken off because it's... You know, there's a, been a lot of zombie things in the past. You know, it's a bit of a saturated market. And I think in terms of the the zombie element to this game, it's probably the, and show, is probably the least interesting zombie-wise than some of the, the other shows that already exist. But the actual story, the journey that Ellie and Joel go on is really, really good within the game. And I th hope the show does the same. So I think the game needed to come first. Otherwise, the show wouldn't have the appeal. And... I know you're saying you really enjoyed it, but I don't know if it would have got, you know, the the funding and the stars in it if the game wasn't already there. So the things that have made the show epic, you know, we, you may not have given it a watch if you didn't already know that, oh, this is a really popular game. Mm. So I think it needed to be in that order, and I'm, I'm happy with what they've done so far. So do you want to recap the first episode for us, what happened? Uh, basically, it starts off in the 60s when we're getting these two scientists talking about what's going to end the world with uh, with zombie plague. One thinks it's going to be, I guess, nuclear warfare, and the other thinks it's going to be what eventually happens is by, like, plague and things like that, and then it jumps to 2003 when it starts with... Joel and his, his daughter. Yeah, so then where that's where the game kicks off. So it's Joel's birthday. His daughter repairs the watch for him, gives it to him. Uh, he goes to bail out his brother from jail. He returns, kind of, they're like realising that something's going on. The city's going into lockdown. There's kind of an outbreak of something. He grabs his daughter. They take off. All the exits are blocked. They go through a, a, like a great car scene through dodging people, getting chased by zombies to eventually finding you know a way to kind of get out and the soldier being like, you need to stop now. And he's being told to execute them. Uh, he fires at them, seemingly misses. And then uh, Joel's brother comes along and takes out the soldier. But in doing that, they realize that uh, his daughter had actually been hit with one of these bullets and then dies. I wasn't sure if the show would then continue to show the scenes of what of what happens in between there and the game, but it seemingly just skipped to where the game takes off. So we see Joel in this kind of post-apocalyptic world where they're guarded inside these gates within Boston, and then what's going on within those walls is we've got the the, the government, or I think they call them the, the, the Federala or the, the, the Fedra, are like running this kind of constitution camp almost kind of thing going on in there and then we've got the fireflies which are basically the rebels that want to stand up against them mm. and there's this internal battle about to go on about that and Joel is kind of 
freelance kind of partially works at the Fireflies, partially does his own thing. Just, you know, he's out to look after himself, really. Um, but he's then been bestowed upon this mission of trying to deliver um, Ellie to another set of people, Fireflies, and another set-up base whilst he's going to try and find his brother who he hasn't been out of contact for a few years. Mm. And which is, you know, the taking place of the game. And, yeah, and that that's, you know, we see them get outside the walls, but then the following episodes, I'm assuming we're going to see their journey of eventually delivering Ellie to the Fireflies as their mission. Yeah, great start. Yeah, I think it was a great start. So... Is there anything you want to discuss about this episode? So we've recapped it, now we're moving into more of, um, I guess, spoilers and, you know, topical discussions about things that have gone in there. Any questions you have for me, someone that's played the game and what you think's going to happen? you have any predictions? Uh, well, I have unfortunately kind of spoiled it myself, so we eventually do find out why the f- Fireflies want to take Ellie to where she is eventually going. Yeah, well, the first episode, I was actually a bit disappointed they gave that away so quickly. Yeah. Uh, so they mentioned that she'd had the bite on her, and she said that it happened three weeks ago, and she didn't become a zombie. So, you know, you can put two and two together as to why she's precious cargo and why they want her to be delivered somewhere, because they want to um, use her to try and, you know, work out a cure. Yeah. Um, as to how the, the game ends, it doesn't give that fully away, but you can see why she's important. And, yeah, I, I don't know if I like that, that they gave it away. I guess for me already knowing it's cool, but for the fan that hadn't seen it, I guess you've lost that suspense. But I guess they assume that their audience had probably all, almost had played the game, so they what's the point? They're not hiding anything that we already know. So, yeah, it's an interesting choice. Yeah, we also did notice there were difference between how the daughter first... Uh, enacted with the um, next door neighbours and that scene was in the game. Yeah, so in the game, um, again, I don't fully remember every aspect of the game, but we went back and watched some footage from the uh, remastered version that just came out on PS5 and through that it showed that the scenes with the dog didn't happen, that, you know, Joel had gone off, returned... She'd been woke up seemingly around the same time and then they left. There was no interaction with the dog next door or the neighbours. I, I can't remember if that was in the original game or maybe they've edited it out because they knew what the show was going to show. But um, that's one seeming difference. You mentioned that something about guards. There was two meant to be two guards in one scene where they were escaping from the, the stronghold in Boston. But in this show, they just had the one guard. Yeah. Which... Whether or not that makes much of a difference, I don't know. But that's just a subtle thing that people have pointed out. Um, but overall, I think it was a really strong episode. Well, what what did you think? For someone that hasn't seen the game, do you are you really are you excited about continuing with this show? Yes, I think it's a very strong start, and it proves that if you respect the material, you can make things respectful. Unlike what Halo did, told its own story, and made something that pissed off people and who was Halo 4 and this show you were respecting the material but the problem is is that there's no mystery involved so you could argue that praying too much respect to something kind of hurts it but it's better being respectful than just hurting something and doing your own thing. My opinion is that it it doesn't need to have a mystery you know Mm. People love the Harry Potter movies, but you could read the books, you know. Like, the there's most most things have some kind of source material it comes from, and if you want to spoil it for yourself, you can find out beforehand. Or if you just simply read the books first or played the games first, it doesn't mean it ruins it for you. Like, I'm excited to relive the journey. You know, even if I just recently completed the game for the first time, I'd still like to see it turn into... A show or a movie and see how they do it so I, I i think sticking close to the story of the game or the source material is perfect i don't think i don't think anyone's going to be disappointed if they do it exactly the same the disappointment will come from when it isn't what they expected like what halo did yeah and i think that's i, I don't think anyone's going to be upset if it's exactly as the game is because you like the game you want to see it in an acting it's 
It's like the reverse. If there's a movie you really like, wouldn't you like the game to follow the movie? Mm. If the game started to come up with its own ideas, it's not what you signed up for. It's not the thing you liked that got you excited about it. So I think sticking close to the source material is key to, for success, really, because the source material was popular. Mm. I guess there's probably some games or movies that have kind of crossed over where the source material wasn't perfect, so then they redid it and made it better, and that can work. But this is already a, a smash hit, the Last of Us series. You don't need to change that. Which is kind of makes me think about what happened with Uncharted. Mm. Uh, so I don't... With the movie. Yeah, the movie. Like they, I don't know if they really so much deviated from the source material or kind of... You know, just gave like a, a somewhat prequel to the source material, but you know, with some things that possibly don't line up fully. But that itself was a good movie, so they kind of got away with it. But yeah, I'm I'm glad that this they you know haven't done the same, and they are from the same Naughty Dog um, studios or yeah, their universe of things. So I'm um, I'm happy that they did it this way for the show, opposed to what they did with Uncharted. I do hope with the success of The Last of Us, it does give more writers and developers a chance to create more uh, TV shows as games. Hopefully that, that will happen with this show. Is there any games out there you can think of that you think would make a really good movie or show? Assassin's Creed? Well, we've already had the movie. It was pretty bad. Well, hopefully they get the... Same vision as they do The Last of Us and could make it into an interesting show. The hard one with Assassin's Creed is because the source material is good. I don't know. I guess if they did it differently, they probably could. I'm not really into the the Assassin's Creed games. I haven't played enough of it to know what the how good the source material is. But I, I like the premise of of the Assassin's Creed, and yeah, the movie just didn't do it for me. What do you think? A game that could come a movie. TV show. Uh, or a TV show or movie. Well, we've got Mario Mario coming, which I'm pretty excited about. So, But something that's not already... I always thought The Last of Us was always my first pick of what I thought they could do, and so we were lucky enough to have got that, and Uncharted would have been my next pick. But in terms of games that I really, really like, could become movies. Maybe God of War? See, I think it could. I just haven't played God of War, so mm. I, I it'd be hard to pick that. But some of my favourite games have came from movies, so it can work. I think some of the original Harry Potter games were phenomenal when they came from great movies that came from books. So it can definitely work there. I'm just going to have to sit on that question as to a game I'd like to see come a movie because Last of Us has always been my answer and they've finally done it. So, mm. And do you think they nailed with the casting choice? Yeah, I, th I think um, Pedro Pascal looks mm. exactly what I would envision Joel to have been. Ellie, it's fine. They needed a young girl that had sass, and I think the actress has shown that in the limited scenes of scene. Whether she looks exactly like Ellie, I don't think so. She just doesn't quite look it, but, you know, it, that's fine. You know, it's their version of it. And um, the other characters were... You know, there's more characters to be seen. But I think so far they've done quite a good job. Do you have any um, changes you would have made to the casting? No, I'm I'm happy with it. I haven't played the game. So as a, someone that's watched the show, I, I'm enjoying it. You mentioned to me off camera that you thought that um, uh, Joel's brother could have been played by um, the actor that's in The Punisher and The Walking Dead and The Wolf of Wall Street. He's kind of in everything. And I, I agree. I actually thought that's who I envisioned to play it as well. Um, but, you know, he's obviously off doing other things, quite a busy man. Yeah. So, who do you think The Last of Us would appeal to? Obviously, people that have played the games. I think it can appeal to most people that are, you know, if you're, you know, if you like zombies, you're into, you know, like, really... High quality. Show. High quality, epic dramas. Mm. And if you played the game. So that does cover a large variety. I'll s yet to see if it will appeal to, you know, people that, you know, if there's going to be many people that 
don't fall into those categories to go, hey, I'll give this a crack and whether they'll find it interesting. They might be like, oh, another zombie show. But, you know, with the possibility that it might only just be two short seasons, maybe that might appeal to more people. Um, it's already the number one ranked show on IMBD, mm. so it's obviously getting good reviews and people are liking it so far. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see where it goes, whether, you know... Maybe when that when it's all said and done and they're finished off the whether they're going to go into both games or just follow because on the first game we'll see if they um if at the end of it you know people that hadn't considered it before will give it a crack after hearing uh, how great it was because I think of shows like Breaking Bad there's so many people that didn't start watching that till well after it finished mm. but because it always sat so high up on the the rankings of the greatest TV shows people eventually gave it a go and came to like it so maybe this might do the same. Where do you see... How long do you think the next episode will go for? I reckon they're going to shrink down to hours. Mm. I think an hour 20 because they wanted to make sure that the first episode finished at that point. Mm. And I think from there on, they'll probably be able to squeeze uh, each episode into... 50 minutes? Yeah, 50 to 60 minutes because, uh, you know, they they can tactically choose what points they want to end it at. Unless they're planning to end it at... You know, the chapters within the game, they, they mm. kind of have chapters where it finishes. Maybe that's the plan. Mm. But I reckon we're going to see hour-long episodes from now on. Do you think the show's good enough on its own without the game? I think it is, but I'd, I wonder if it'd appeal to people if the game didn't already exist. It's such a hard one. I, I think if it came out with no game existing, I think maybe it would have snuck under the radar and not got the hype it did so I I think it does need the game to have existed yeah I actually like the atmosphere and how the world is compared to like the walking dead and other zombie show I think it you can tell it's strong writing compared to how the walking dead there's no goal with it's more survival but with the last of us you know there's Song of the Cure, we've got to take this person to somewhere. I think it's better direction. Yeah, I think comparing to The Last of Us where it's, yeah, you kind of like survival or they're seeing if there's something else out there or they're trying to build a society. The Last of Us is, is very much, you know, humanity's fallen apart, the government have taken over and they've built these walls within cities that, you know, where they'll protect people and... If you want to go outside the walls, you just risk your own life. And they've kind of accepted that's the future. And they, it's 20 years have passed and it doesn't seem like they've tried to rebuild cities or try and um, move forward. They're just accepting that life will forever surround, you know, trying to avoid the zombies, essentially. And I, I do like their version of the zombies, the different abilities they can have and what kind of causes them to be zombies. And, you know, the longer that they stay a zombie they change because the, the kind of bacteria takes over their body and changes their structure so it's um yeah it's a very cool premise of zombies compared to some other shows you're looking forward to seeing the action scenes from the show compared to the game i think so but i guess in the game the action scenes are generally you doing it yeah well it's more like you know joel and ellie um either sneaking around zombies or, you know, getting in gunfights with other people. And I, I reckon they'll probably limit the length of the gunfights because sometimes, you you know, they could take 10 to 20 minutes because you're kind of sneaking around killing one person and another person. And I, I in a show, though, I don't think that's needed. I think mm. they might just kind of sneak in and take out a few people and they'd be a bit more tactical. Mm. Where in the game, you know, you can... You can be stealthy or you can blast them out. But you generally have lack bullets, so I'd be intrigued if they do that. Because in The Walking Dead, they seem to have an infinite supply of bullets and they never miss. They always get headshots. Where, you know, in the game, you constantly were short on bullets and you need to make sure, you know, each shot counted. Otherwise, you move to your melee weapon. So we'll see how they go about that. So a word how... Well, to describe a word, how would you summarise the episode? Oh, I say amazing. Like, it was amazing. I don't think they could have did anything differently or better. It was, you know, it was a really, really solid start that, you know, got me very excited for what's coming up. I'm going to say astonishing. I thought from someone that hasn't played the game, they made 
they made, especially the scene when Joel's daughter died that was very impactful, very emotional, that scene for someone that hasn't played the game. So eventually when I do play the game, it will kind of be the opposite from Luke's perspective. He already knew that scene was coming and I didn't know. So very looking forward to the next episode and would is this i think this show is actually a really good weekly show and it would be better as a binge but i actually that looking forward to the next episode factor i think actually works for this show if i think if this show was a binge binging show i actually think it would be over too quick and i think it would be messing out yeah totally totally i i'm a i'm mentioned this many times i'm in favor of weekly releases so i think Mm. it's great i think the best shows get weekly released and the the not so good shows get you know content dumped so i I think this is worthy of a weekly release well thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the video like and subscribe as always you're awesome and see you in the next one Bye bye